Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I wanted to have a real quick discussion on how to use a battery saver, also known as a memory saver, anytime you're thinking about disconnecting the primary battery on your vehicle. All right, so let's take a closer look at the device. So as you can see, oh, this is actually pretty simple. All it's got here is two alligator clips on one side so we can hook up another 12 volt source. So in this example, I've just pulled, I've got a spare car battery, which is a good 12 volt source. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, hook it up to the battery saver and we'll get 12 volts coming from the spare battery, which will then go to this OBD2 or Onboard Diagnostics 2 port, which I can then plug into the car, which will then supply 12 volts to the entire system. I've seen other versions of this battery saver where instead of an OBD2 port, you actually have a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug, and you would plug that into the cigarette lighter of your car, therefore giving 12 volts to the whole system. I didn't like that system as much, um, especially for my car. Mine is a Ford Transit, and actually the cigarette lighters on this car are designed to shut off after 30 minutes uh, to save power. Uh, so that would be pretty bad if I didn't complete the work in 30 minutes and those cigarette lighters went down, and therefore uh, I lost power to the whole system. So instead, I like this one where you've got it going from a 12 volt source to an OBD2 sensor uh, uh, port. Okay, so maybe the first thing we should do is let's just make sure that this cable is uh, good and is actually going to supply 12 volts. So it's actually got a nice LED on the front, this red LED, and you can see it's off right now. But if I were to hook this up to my spare battery, whoops, like so, there we go, you can see that the, the LED is now on, it's red. So that's good. So uh, it's working that way. Maybe we should check it in reverse as well. Meaning, let me disconnect it from the battery. Let's plug this into the OBD2 port and the red light is gonna go on and actually you're also gonna hear some humming or some beeping. Now, quick word of warning at this point, uh, you got to be a little careful because these cables are loose and you don't want to be an idiot like I was the first time I did this and don't leave these touching and then plug it into the into the car, right? Because what that's going to do is you're going to have 12 volts supplied from the car. If these are touching, you've shorted it out and you'll blow a fuse. And here, you want, you want proof? I, here's the fuse I blew. I was an idiot the first time I did it and I blew a fuse doing exactly that. So don't be silly like me and blow the fuse. Maybe as a quick sidebar, luckily if you do blow this fuse on the OBD2 sensor, uh, or sorry, the OBD, OBD2 port, luckily, hopefully your system is as friendly as mine. I was able to just go to my owner's manual. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, this is not really germane to the discussion, but I'll just point out that, yeah, I was able to find the OBD2 fuse, it's this F13 fuse, and replace it, and then I was back in business. So if you want to save yourself a 20-minute detour, what I would do first is take these two and clip them somewhere not conductive, like to this piece of plastic. So now these are not going to short, and I can plug this safely into the OBD2 uh, port on my car. So again, LED is off. Let's just pop open the OBD2 port on my car, plug this in. Great, and I can see the LED. You probably can't see the LED. You're gonna have to take my word that it's on. Maybe you can see it down there. But <laughs> more interestingly, let's say, is it starts making this beeping. I guess this is my particular battery saver unit. It makes this beeping to let you know that, hey, you're plugged in, you're running on the battery saver right now, so just be a little careful. Uh, personally, I think this is a little bit annoying, so I'm going to, now that I've verified that this battery saver is good, I'm actually gonna try to wrap this thing up to see if I can muffle this beeping a little bit. All right, so now we're plugged in. So at this point, the car is getting 12 volts from two sources. One is the main battery that is still connected, and the second one is this 12 volt source from my spare battery that's hooked in to the 12 volt system via the OBD2 sensor. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull off the main battery, and we should still have power via the battery saver, and most of the system should work. So I'm gonna go do that maintenance, and then uh, once I've replaced it, I will come back and we'll check to see if this battery saver actually worked. All right, so I know this is a little hard to see now, but uh, I've taken the main battery out of the car, and normally, if you had done this, the radio and all the other subsystems would have lost their power, but since we've got the battery saver plugged in, hopefully I should be able to do whatever maintenance I need to do and uh, plug the main battery back in, and then the battery saver will have retained all of the settings and we won't have lost any of them in the interim. So let's go ahead and do this switch, and then we'll check to see if it worked.
All right, so we've got the ba the main battery is back installed under the seat. Again, this car is interesting. It's the main battery is under the driver's seat, not in the engine compartment, but that's a story for another day. Uh, let's go ahead and see if this battery saver slash memory saver works. So again, what we'll do is let's go ahead and disconnect it from the 12 volt battery. Again, we're gonna be very careful how we disconnect these and we're not gonna let them short out. So I'm going to, there we go. And now let's pull the memory saver, again, remember I wrapped it up in foam to try to muffle that annoying beep. Okay, so now shut the OBD2 port and let's go see if everything still works. So what we're gonna do is let me go ahead and move the battery out of the wheel well so I can put my foot on the brake. Let's go ahead and put the keys in the ignition and there we go. Look at that. The time is still correct. It is, let me see, what time is it? It is, uh, yep, 6.49, 6.49 there. Let's turn on the radio, see if we got, there we go. Radio still works. Average miles per gallon, all our other computer information was working. Let's go ahead and just make sure we're all okay. I'll start the car up. There we go, car starts up. Looks like we're good. So it looks like the battery saver did exactly what we wanted it to do. All right, so there you have it. How to use a battery sla saver, AKA a memory saver, to retain settings like your radio or computer programs or any other subsystems in your car's uh, memory while you are replacing or removing the main battery. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really surprisingly helps me continue making these videos. And I hope to have a lot more videos on Ford Transit. And actually I'm working on converting this right now into sort of a family adventure uh, mobile. So if you're interested in that kind of of activity please check out the channel for other videos and i hope to catch you at a future discussion so until next time i'll talk to you later bye